Here's a curious thing, a micro from 1988 that was exclusive to India. Your first reaction might be that if it looks, feels and smells like a ZX Spectrum without the Sinclair name emblazoned upon it, it's probably a cheap clone. But not this. This was officially licensed from Sinclair. It's not working, it's filthy and it's unusual, everything we love on this channel. And today we're going to try and clean it and fix it up. Hello Cave Dwellers, this is the DB or Decibel Spectrum Plus. Let's see what it's all about then. The ZX Spectrum was a range of low-cost computers by British company Sinclair which dominated the 8-bit microcomputer sales here in the UK. Rubbing shoulders with other homegrown systems like the BBC Micro, the Amstrad CPC and holding its own against the sales figures of the American might of the Commodore 64. I had no idea that the ZX Spectrum was ever sold in India. In fact, I can't say I've ever given it much thought. What computers did they even use in India in the 80s? Well, apparently this was one of them. And the interesting thing is that it appears to have been made in the region, not just imported there from the Timex Sinclair factory where Spectrums were normally made in Dundee, Scotland. I wonder if it's any different on the inside to a regular Spectrum. Well, let's get a good look at it. And before we do, we'd like to thank PCBWay.com for supporting our episode today. They aren't just about PCBs, although they do do a tremendous job of that. They also offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing and injection moulding. If you're creating, then PCBWay.com can help you bring your project to life. Get an instant quote now over at PCBWay.com and we thank them for their support. At first glance, it's all very familiar to owners of the original but we soon start to see minor differences. There's a round reset switch on the side that's normally a little square one on UK models. We've also got a lot of slotted instead of Phillips screws all over the case. I, I guess they must have been cheaper or more readily available in the region. On opening the lid, I'm doing it very carefully, but I really needn't have because the membrane that connects the keyboard to the main board, it isn't even plugged in. I'm definitely not the first person to go in here. Should I be worried? Also disconnected is the reset switch, another sign that perhaps someone has given up on this machine in the past, I wonder. Nevertheless, we get our first look at the system board, which is as filthy as the outside of the machine. And what old computer is worth a look at if it doesn't contain signs of a bug that shows its final resting place inside? It seems we have something kind of woodlouse-like that, uh, died in one of the legs here. Now I'm no ZX Spectrum channel but I've had enough of them open to recognise that this board is a little bit different to the UK ones that I have. Let's just take off that great big bit of metal, that's the heat sink, so that we can get a better look at it. So things that you might not notice. More oddities, like for example there are a lot of radial capacitors here where we'd normally find axial ones. This is how it came from the factory. Like the screws, perhaps it was just cheaper or more available to get these where they were built. A closer look at the RF modulator and it looks like it's been snipped to give a composite output. This would have been a user modification, I can't see why they would have put an RF modulator in there from the factory and then snipped it, so thank you former owner, that saves us a job. More unusually at the bottom of the board we've got a second voltage regulator. Now normally I believe there's only one of these and that's at the top right hand side of the board where the power comes into it. So quite why this is here I'm not sure, but if you have any idea why this is in here, please do leave a comment because I'd love to understand why we've got the extra regulator. This is the ROM here and it has a Decibel logo on it. I wonder if it's the same as a regular ZX Spectrum ROM or does it contain some differences? I'd be surprised if it's any different to be honest. If they wanted to retain the compatibility with the Speccy's huge software library, it would be a disaster if that compatibility was lost. We'll just rattle through the other parts that make up the Speccy quickly. It has a Zilog Z80 CPU. The ULA here consolidates lots of functions that would otherwise have been broken out into other chips. It has 16K of lower RAM made up of 4116 chips and 32K of upper RAM made up of two 41464 chips. These are 64K chips, but only a fraction of that will be used. Sinclair famously used half the capacity of 40 chips in Spectrums to reduce the cost, but whether or not these are faulty, later replacements or just what was available, I don't know. But I have seen other models of the DB Spectrum Plus that look like this. 
you can see it has a daughter board for the upper RAM. So there appear to be two variants of how this machine came out of the factory. We can also see at the bottom of the board is Decibel's name and it says Spectrum 1988 Issue 7A. Now the 16 and 48K ZX Spectrums ran up to issue 6A. There was no 7A, at least until now. We'll come back to that board a little later when we try to fix it up. In the top half of the machine is the ribbon on the keyboard membrane. It looks like the normal type of ribbons that we get on our UK Spectrums, but there is some text on it. And it says, manufactured by Control Touch Electronics in 1989. And I've looked them up and they still exist today at the same address. They're located on the west of India, just east of Mumbai. It's highly likely that a membrane of this age won't function as they're prone to degrading over time, but you never know. Maybe Control Touch Electronics did things differently. I've ordered a spare. Lots more slotted screws later to undo the keyboard and we can see that we've got rubber domes that sit between the membrane and the plastic keys. And aside from needing a good clean, that seems to be all in one piece. A closer look at the membrane and it's not showing any patches where it's visibly disintegrated and turned to dust. But again, that's no guarantee that it'll be in good working order. The same can't be said of this very rusty piece of metal here. It sits in the space bar. So that goes on the big list of things that we need to clean today. The keys in the keyboard are made up of two parts, the caps on top, which normally we'd use a keycap puller to take off. But to be honest, on this machine, you're better off just using your fingers to pull them off. They pop off very, very easily. Ugh, look at all that muck in there. That is some quality imported filth. Each key is made up of the keycap on top and a white plunger on the underside that pushes down on the rubber dome and then onto the membrane. And all of these need to come off for a clean. Here's a fun fact for you. Those white plungers are the exact size of the holes in my kitchen sink. So if you lose one, you too can spend all day hunting for it, only to find it nestled perfectly in the sinkhole. And we'll just whip out the reset switch as well before putting the lower half of the case in too. The original feet are present in that lower half. These are round rubber feet that plug in through a hole and they're pretty well worn down and just about holding it together when I pull them out. If this machine was going out for public use, then they probably wouldn't last long at all but I expect this to end up in a cabinet with other exotic machines and it will come out for occasional demos, but it's not going to get high use. So I'd like to keep them original if we can. Let's get scrubbing. And I can tell you it's been a while since we had a good scrub on this channel and I enjoyed every moment of it. You know the drill. I'm giving all the plastics a lovely soak in warm water and car shampoo, taking my time to try and scrub every nook and cranny and you don't need me talking over the scrubbing. So let's turn up the volume and let's go to work. The screws were pretty rusty, so I thought I'd chuck them into a little ultrasonic cleaner with some rust remover, even the ones that didn't need it. Let's just give them all a good clean. This will remove the rust and it will clean them and they will come out shiny, but don't be too disappointed if they go a bit of a dull color as they dry off. 
they will at least be squeaky clean and allow us to use those original screws again. And we'll chuck in the voltage regulator heatsink too. I've removed a nasty old bit of foam that sits between it and the case as that's just crumbling away. There are our screws, looking a lot happier. I forgot to put the spacebar retainer in there, so that can go in there too. And just for good measure, I then busted out the silver metal polish and I gave the heatsink a good clean and also that spacebar retainer and it came out shinier than the day it left the factory. With everything cleaned down and drying, let's turn our attention back to the PCB. Now fixing this up wasn't too taxing, certainly a lot less work than I was expecting it to be, to be honest. The first thing I did was test the power coming into the board, and I do apologise, I've got my hands all over the front of the multimeter when I'm filming. But what we were getting here was 9 volts coming in. That should be going into our regulator and it should be putting out 5 volts. But I was getting a nominal amount out of it, so it's safe to say that our regulator is dead. My next concern would be that if there were power issues, then the RAM might have been zapped, as so often happens on these spectrums. But let's deal with the regulator first. So we'll get lots of flux onto the old regulator joints, a quick check with the iron, and these look like they might need a bit more assistance to get them flowing again. So we'll slap on a bunch of fresh solder to mix its fluxy core in with the old solder and get things moving. And then I fully intended to get my desoldering gun out, but I noticed as I was heating the solder here, the regulator slipped. So I was a bit naughty and uh, I guided the regulator out with my pliers as the solder was molten. That comes with the danger of ripping out things that shouldn't be ripped out if you're not careful. So this is not a tip to be followed. It just happened to come out nicely this time. Slapped wrists, bad nail. With the holes cleared and the regulator out of the way, I took the opportunity to give the power jack a squirt and a clean with some contact cleaner. Just in case that was adding to the problems, it looked pretty dirty to me. And then we'll pop in the new regulator, bending it at the same point as the original so that the heatsink and the screw will all line up with the hole in the board properly. And then we solder that into place. Now while I was doing this, something else caught my eye. That second regulator, the purpose of which we still don't know, while untested, has some dodgy looking joints on it. So as the iron was hot, I gave that some new solder too. It can't do any harm. Okay, we're ready for test number two. Let's get the power into the board and see if that's working correctly. And at this point, I was quite stunned to see a Sinclair Research Limited message appear on the screen. I was convinced that this was going to give me a lot more problems, but there it is, a happy ZX Spectrum. Brilliant. The repair gods have been kind to us today, but there's still a lot of work to do. Next, we put all the keys back in, and despite a good scrub, there's still quite a bit of finger bovril around the lower lip of each key, so I gave each row a final clean as I went along. Some of the keys seem to have this kind of baked in brown stain on them. It just wouldn't shift no matter what I tried to use to remove it. So I really did try everything and I think we just need to put any of those little brown marks down to patina. I also made sure to put the arrow keys back on the correct way. The eagle eyed among you will have noticed an upside down one when this arrived at the very start of the episode. Bonus points for you if you spotted that. Have I mentioned how much I enjoy cleaning things? Mmm, cleaning unless it's the dishes. We did have one breakage in the process of putting this back together, and it was, ironically, the brake key. When I paired it up, I noticed that the plunger had split the back of the key. There's a little cross on there that the plunger sits in, and we need that to be intact for it all to stay in place. So, with a pair of tweezers and a little bit of super glue, we were able to fix that back up, and it all goes back in its rightful place.
To give the rubber feet a fighting chance of a few more years of life at least on display, I gave them a good soaking in Gummy Fledger, which cleans and protects rubber things, normally card door seals rather than micro feet, and it helps to retain the elasticity of the rubber, which these things lose when they dry out. So liberal amounts of that went in and I let it really soak in before returning them to the case. With the cleaning completed, we could put it all back together and see how our membrane is looking. Has it stood the test of time? The answer was a big fat no. Only half the keys were working, unfortunately, and I did try snipping it down the end of the cable of the membrane just to see if we could get that working, but to no avail. And if you snip it down too much, you'll then lose the ability to close the case anyway because there's not enough cable. Thankfully, the replacement had arrived. So first we take out the old one and you can see that that was secured in place with some double-sided tape and I put the new one in using some more tape and that came from uh, ZX Renew is where I bought the membrane. It arrived really quickly so I can highly recommend them for your spectrum parts. So we pop the keyboard membrane in and we screw up exactly 3 million screws and then we give it a test. And this time our keys were all working perfectly. Excellent. I even had a sneaky game of jetpack just to put the machine through its paces and it all worked great, even with filthy edge connectors on the PCB. So let's take care of that mainboard now with one part PCB cleaner to 10 parts distilled water and an ultrasonic cleaner. I popped out the socketed chips and I thought it'd probably be a good idea also to remove the speaker instead of submerging that. But everything else goes into the chip fryer, I mean the ultrasonic cleaner. When that's done, we give it a quick rinse with some more distilled water and then we hang it out to dry. And you can see now that our board is super clean. We'll pop the chips back in and the speaker and that is a gorgeous clean PCB to go in a clean case. Something neat that I noticed when I took the chips out for cleaning is that the ULA in the Spectrum is a very late model. It has this PS marking on the top, which stands for Plessy. Plessy bought out Ferranti in 1988, who manufactured the ULA chip, like this one with the Ferranti name on in my UK spectrum. The ULA is an important chip in that it consolidated a lot of chips down into one to help reduce the cost and the complexity of the machine. And it's really quite cool that we've got one of the later ones. This is the only example of that ULA that I have. Anyway, let's get it all back together and then we can see the fruits of our labor. It's gone from a filthy, non-working machine to one that's cleaned up beautifully on the outside, as well as getting a simple repair and a really good cleanup on the inside. And then I was able to enjoy some gaming on it here in the cave. And I did so happy that it was looking and running like it was brand new. But as I did wondering, what life did this machine have? Who used it? Where in India did it live? And how on earth did it find its way back to these shores? I guess some questions we'll never know the answer to. But it's a fine example of the system and one that I'll be very proud to show off to anyone who'll be willing to listen to me here. The Decibel Spectrum Plus. Something that you don't see every day. As always, thank you for watching a middle-aged man clean a computer. If you enjoyed it, please take a moment to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Take care.